Okay, right on time, I think. Thanks everybody for being here. It's great to see people live and in person again. Uh, hopefully it'll hold and we'll get to see beautiful finished properties. So, uh, but we wanted to launch our new season of stewards events here in this historical place, in this historic anchor on Canyon Road. This place, El Zaguan, and uh, the garden, and you'll see the, the outside space down below, is really the future of the historic Santa Fe Foundation. In 2018-2019, the board worked on a master plan for the foundation. The plan, which you're about to see, will open it to the public and really become a preservation center. Uh, there will be events outside and inside. There'll be lectures, exhibitions. Um, you'll see as we walk through it, there'll be a history interpretation center. And the history of El Zaguan essentially follows the timeline of the history of Santa Fe. We're budgeted at about 400,000. That may increase a little bit. And at the moment, we're more than halfway there. We're at about 267,000. So um, the agenda, as soon as I go quiet, Nancy Owen Lewis, who is uh, a scholar, historian, writer, and a board director here at the Historic Santa Fe Foundation, will speak about the history of this place. And it's pretty fascinating. Then we'll have Larry Good, board director and architect, uh, do an overview of uh, really how we got to and through the master plan process. And then uh, Barbara Felix, who is our architect on this project and a former director here at the foundation, is actually going to walk you through the master plan. We'll go into uh, each room that's going to be affected and changed, and she'll explain uh, uh, what this is going to look like two or three years from now. So with that, Nancy, would you like to talk to us? Six years ago, the foundation still owned seven historic houses and having recently served on the board, much of our time had been devoted to discussing repairs. And addressing these concerns didn't really give us adequate time to educate the public about our history and the importance of preservation, even though we did those things. And they're critical parts of our mission but the sale of six of these properties have since provided us with an endowment and more time to focus on the totality of our mission. And thankfully, the board unanimously agreed to preserve El Zaguan. And frankly, there is no other property in Santa Fe like this. And in many ways, it mirrors the entire history of Santa Fe including the Santa Fe Trail. And so I just briefly want to hit some of the highlights. It was once the home of James L. Johnson, a well-to-do Santa Fe trader from a prominent Maryland family in 1854. Summer of 2018, uh, Barbara and Larry Good were seated next to uh, Denise and Pete Warzel at an SAR tailgate party uh, before Dr. Atomic and uh, I had the, I exercised the bad judgment of telling Pete that I thought El Zaguan looked shabby and uh, I went on to give some examples of why I thought it looked shabby. He said, well, Larry, uh, <laughs> since that's how you feel, I've got something for you. 
and uh, that suited me fine. So I said absolutely and we rolled up our sleeves and got started. The master plan committee that uh, Pete put together was formed uh, in uh, late 2018 and we had our kickoff meeting in January of 2019. And that process was great because it gave everybody a chance to say what, what really are our priorities. If, if this is going to be our primary venue for hosting events, welcoming the public into El Zaguan and teaching them and inspiring them about historic preservation, how do we best do that? So um, what is the master plan? Here's what came out as the top five priorities. Uh, first was to make sure the building envelope itself is stabilized, that we don't have water infiltration through the roof, through the walls, that there's no structural distress foundation-wise. Uh, good news there is that in spite of this building being 150 years old, it's in great shape uh, as an envelope. Second, give special attention to public safety items. Uh, our sidewalk out in front, is it level? Are we gonna have people tripping and falling? Are our steps safe and the level changes in the complex? Uh, third, address the needs of the staff. Uh, we, we have no current flexibility for expansion, if we have expansion of the staff. The workspaces, as you'll see, are not really ideal. They're not adequate for our team to do their best work. Uh, fourth, and this really becomes the heart of the master plan, create a larger, more welcoming space to accommodate the public. And uh, this is really the transformative part of the plan. The board made the difficult decision to take apartment one and apartment three out of the rental pool and convert those into spaces that are a part of uh, what the public has access to and the staff is involved in in El Zaguan. So uh, that's a big decision. And then finally, and I find this really interesting, think about the sense of a compound. The El Zaguan property uh, is probably what you know it to be, the garden and the building and the residence garden and the driveway area out there. But the James L. Johnson Margareta Dietrich property included more. And we need to further that sense of compound. We share utilities, we share the driveway. Uh, we're gonna show you a potential gathering space that's gonna be ripe for interpretation and, and giving more history about this property. So those are really the five top priorities of the master plan. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna make our way up the garden path here, and I wanna tell you a little bit about a garden item first before we turn it over to Barbara. In 1890, up where the Palace Avenue Bridge crosses over the Santa Fe River, an acequia peeled off there. And that acequia ran along uh, north of and parallel to Canyon Road, comes along the uh, north side of the El Zaguan building, and then turns exposed in our garden as it moves north-south, and then it disappears back underground again along that wall. We want to restore that exposed piece of the Canyon Road community ditch. We're going to put water in the upstream corner uh, up at the uh, northwest corner of the El Zaguan portal and let the water run through the acequia under the steps as you pass into the threshold of the garden. Then we'll capture that water and we'll be using our well water here and we'll recirculate it back up to the top. So enjoy looking at the remnant of that acequia as you walk in because we're going to restore that and put water in it and then we're gonna put an interpretive sign that tells the history of the Canyon Road Community Ditch, which, by the way, quit uh, having water in it in 1940. So 1890 to 1940 it was a functioning acequia. So, Barbara, lead us to apartment one. <laughs> Hi. First off, I want to welcome you all to El Zaguan. I'm assuming all of you have been here previously, albeit probably not in the secret apartments, which is kind of magical, right? So um, 
You all know that El Zaguan has an internship program where they bring in artists. And so apartment one uh, has previously been rented in apartment three. And you can see they are cute and charming and quaint and generally overstuffed when there is someone renting them. So the idea is to take the sala that you're standing in now, which is used for obviously community art exhibits and also as the boardroom, is to actually make apartment one the boardroom and secondary meeting space for the staff and allow this space to actually just become a community space um, and an art exhibit space. So we are standing right now in the sala and this is apartment one. So you can see there's a small bathroom and there's a small kitchen and the idea is to take those out, go ahead and put storage. Um, as you walk through the building, I want you to think about how little closet space there is. And so when El Zaguan has a meeting like the stewards, where do all the chairs go? Generally, they're sitting in an old apartment on top of a bathtub. And so this is really about, to Larry's point, how to make the building more efficient, how to make it safe. You just went over a low step to a high step, right? So how do we kind of deal with all of those things while still keeping that charm? And you'll notice as you exit this space, again, there's a little step up, there's lots of little steps. So what's going to be happening in this next space, which is now the exhibit space as well, is there's a wall that was built between the little kitchen area and this welcome area. That wall is going to be taken out, and so that will become enlarged. Uh, there will be a welcome center, reception desk, kind of a better gift shop, right, in order to have people be a little more welcomed graciously. Then what will happen is the space, uh, which is going to be the interpretation or the exhibit center, as you walk through the kitchen and kind of stick your head in that, you will see this is where Pete and his team do their magic which means all of them are in one space, and it's a little cramped. Um, so this is the future interpretive center. So the idea is the closet doors would come out there. We'll use that niche to have some kind of digital TV, right, so that there's some kind of story told. Um, obviously, keeping the fireplace and what's charming. You can see, again, there's lots of different steps. And again, all of that kind of gets in the way to Larry's point about safety in terms of right how you have kind of an accessible path through the building. So if you all want to head kind of back out through the kitchen and then take a left out the gift shop door, there's kind of that main, the El Zaguan. So this used to be apartment three and the goal for this space is that this become the staff space. This larger space would become the executive director office. So the space over here would be used for four staff. The goal is that this allows some flexibility for future growth for El Zaguan, which is really important. You kind of just pass through the Zaguan quickly, and so you can see the green painted mailboxes, which are shared, and then on the right is the Dorothy Stewart painted doors. So this little apartment was also an apartment. Um, it's now being used for research and volunteers to come and do history. So again, the idea is this would get converted to an accessible bathroom and then still a small conference area here. So it's tiny. You can all just kind of stick your head in and pop back out. This doorway marks the the boundary between the residence courtyard and the residence portal. And just recently, the master gardeners and Linda Churchill came to do a little design charrette with the residents about how to improve their courtyard. So let's just sort of walk through the residence courtyard and then we're gonna head down uh, into the easement area. And as you walk down the steps, the, the arbored stairway is a Kate Chapman design. She. Uh, designed this back when Margretta and Dorothy Stewart were here on the property. So it dates back to the late 20s. Everything that you see here, the three homes over there, uh, these houses uh, along the north end uh, out to Camino Escondido uh, were all owned by both James Johnson and then later Margretta Dietrich. This was an orchard back in the day and there's still a few fruit trees here that are mature 
And the, the goal here is to create a, a gathering place with stone paving around the fountain so there's a place where you can set chairs and maybe even at certain times erect a tent for an event. And uh, since we share this easement with these neighbors, do something that uh, really brings us together and invite the community here and do an interpretive sign here as well that tells the story of the overall property and get this sense of compound to come to life.